So welcome to another episode of Dungeons, Dragons, and Mics. Uh, while I was waiting for some people to come in, because we're starting a little bit late, I was just kind of, we are going to chat and have a little conversation uh, before we get right into things. But uh, we're going to head to a new format pretty soon with this. So Dungeons, Dragons, and Mics is going to end up being a recap show slash talk show with um, a cast member every other week so it's directly following the wednesday following um our stream with uh, dungeons dragons and dice we're gonna have dungeons dragons and mics at seven o'clock and uh, it'll be myself and one of the other cast members here hanging out going over the recap and uh answering your dungeons dragons and dice questions i actually just... really like this 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 idea you know it's a good yeah good format i'm actually pulling up my notes from the last session just so I, uh, you know, if anything comes up, I can talk about it. Well, but that, yeah, it was, uh, I was going to say, I had, I had a question right off the bat for you because I'm wondering this myself. Did you expect us to kick the shit out of the silver terror that badly? So, <laughs> so Haas, let me tell you, I don't know why I've been calling you Haas all day. I don't know, but it's all right. I, it it I'll works take it. for me. Um, I don't know. I wasn't expecting that. I thought we were going to have a little bit more of a longer, drawn-out battle. But I was actually so surprised with the amount of natural 20s that were going on. Um, admittedly, the uh, Silver Terror, which it was actually a bullet. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the jumping ability. I, I should have I should have changed that around to be honest, uh, but I was really surprised that y'all took it down. I, I beefed a, a bullet up. Yeah. Um, and still, it's the ranger, the two rangers, and with the whips and all the the fairy fire. Say, the, yeah. The hunter's mark. It was insane. Yeah, I missed a lot, or Barack missed a lot, but uh, yeah, Becky, she, she couldn't miss. She was getting like six natural twenties. So that's that's yeah. a ridiculous amount, and those whips were. Uh, yeah, I, you know, they're, they're, they're powered up, ready to go. And you know, it's funny, it's funny because she mentioned to me, and she mentioned to Keating Woodwrights as well, mm. I want I want to make whips, like, whips need to be better because they only can output this amount of damage. It's true. And, like, what yeah. I just saw there, it's like, do we need to, do we need to update whips at all? Like, at all? Because <laughs> it's like, holy shit. Uh, I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> Hunter's but, Mark, Fairy Fire, but I mean, the Fairy Fire and the Hunter's Mark really just cancel each other out, I guess, at some point, right? Not really, um, no, 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 because the Hunter's Mark is an extra, just an extra D6, right? But the right, Fairy, right. The fairy, fairy Fire, fire. yeah, that's the, that's the big one, because you're getting your advantage, right? That's... Exactly, exactly. So yeah, you're right, you, I stand corrected, because I always forget that Hunter's Mark is actually just an extra D6 of damage. It and does you keep, had Colossus... Yeah, keep going, keep going, yeah. You had Colossus Slayer as well. I do have Colossus Slayer, yes. That's but, correct. I mean, if you were hitting more, this thing would have went down faster. Yeah, I missed a lot. Like, I, I was rolling surprisingly uh -huh. bad, especially with advantage. Basically, what I needed what I needed to hit was a 12 or higher. Because yeah. of the, yeah. the sharp, the sharpshooter basically drops me down to a plus 4 on the dice. Plus 4, plus 5. One of the two. Um, right. And, uh, and so taking that negative, yeah, basically with the, with the armor that thing had, I had to, I had to, uh, I had, I had to yeah, have more than a 13, I think, or yeah, 13 or 12. That was a natural and that's the natural AC of it. I thought seven, it's 17. I was like, okay, you know, I don't really want to up it any higher because commonly, Hey, Nave, good evening. Um, the commonly it's you you all don't really roll that high you know usually it's it's i've just been looking at our last shows you know it's a it's a 15 to 17 ratio uh right. so i thought that the combat was gonna be a little bit drawn a little more, more drawn out but with the natural 20s and the unnatural 19s and 21s and all that stuff uh i was i was blown away i was yes. like Cypher was luck was on your side. <laughs> killing it. Cypher was killing it. She was <laughs> she could I mean it was just all the natural twenties that she had been missing out on for the last three week or three three sessions basically. Yeah, she was having a lot of tough I remember what the first session she came in, 
and Cipher was really having a tough time with uh, hitting things. And then, and then the uh, oh my god, the Onkegs were really teaming up on her too. So I felt bad. She almost died. Really she bad. almost died the first episode. She almost died, and then she she was she's actually the first person in Welcome the, the D team. D show. You're dead. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> she was the first person on a D D and D show to to collapse too. Do yeah. it on zero. Yeah. Um. So which thanks, I'm Peter. That it hasn't happened. Anymore. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised it hasn't honest. happened more either. But uh, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I know you're trying to kill us actively every episode. So this is the thing, you know, I always, I always joke like, oh, my, my, like, oh, natural 20, oh, great. Or like, mm -hmm. or when I get pissed off on my dices and hitting, I think, like, I love seeing you guys succeed. Uh, yeah. I love seeing you guys do well. Um, I just, I kind of get in the mindset of that character or that creature and I'm like, God damn it, I want to hit you. I want to hit you bad, right? Yeah. And but I don't necessarily want you all to like perish and stuff. I do think though <clears throat> Cypher going down in that episode, uh it kind of puts stuff into like into it, second gear. It creates drama, man. And I and I really mm -hmm. like that. Like I would rather go down or I would rather like have my character die than have like a boring encounter where Send i'm like yeah yeah basically like i'd rather instead of going through the game on easy mode i'd rather mm -hmm. die on hard mode but like make it cool you know what i mean go in the blaze of glory yeah essentially well that but like i think you get so many more interaction like it makes it more entertaining um for us and for everyone watching to be able to be like to have real like fear or have like real concern of what could happen um mm -hmm. in this encounter so we got a question in chat it looks like uh from greg uh do you guys care that <laughs> Grigorn went down three times in episode 23 because i feel like everyone's looking past that do you want to answer that uh, um there was some concern but uh, i also know that if Grigorn goes down he's gonna magically have a twin brother that's the exact same as him pop up in the next episode. So, yeah, like I, Briorn. Bri, yeah, Briorn. <laughs> <laughs> so, f Greg, honestly, I knew that uh, Wawa Tessie moved pretty quick into defensive position around Griorn. Um So, look at it from this way: I wasn't picking on you to get constantly hit, but if you're thinking from like a wild animal standpoint. What would they do? Their tactics, right? You know, they see someone's down. They got to stomp. I think they got to stomp off on one of you, um, because the way the the charged work with the Arok is they hit you, knock you down, and then they can use a stomp as a bonus action. Um, I think that might have been on Cipher. I don't remember a hundred percent, but you know, we know Griorn is meaty. He can handle it. <laughs> Well, he was meaty, uh, but yeah, he just, yeah. He, he was, he was up and down, up and down, up and down. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> a few times. Which Until, I feel bad. Yeah. But uh, that's why I like having, you know, that's why, uh, what's it called? Uh, polymorph is such a great, like last resort spell. Cause if you're, if he's, oh, yeah. if he's, you know, down to one health and she just goes, okay, congratulations. You're now a meaty, you know, woolly mammoth with 150 hit points. That go, was epic, though. Go do things. Yeah, I, I, I love. I mean, that's why I love when I play. Uh, um, when I play druids, it's yeah, you know, last resort. It you can toss it out there, and and uh, if things are getting real dire, then that's uh, you know, something you can do. So let me ask you, like, why is that a last resort, though? Are you waiting till they go down to? Well, to low enough. Wawa Tessie, it could be your last resort. Um, for me, it's never a last resort. <laughs> Bro, you like to go right into uh to polymorph. Uh, polymorph. So, uh, I so I well, go right in, I go right into an animal form. I'm I whenever I'm like I I wild shape right off the bat and I use those first two those two wild shapes as um and I play as a tank in that scenario. Like I go right up on the 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 enemy because uh, you're basically a, a, just a sack of hit points um that can attack so like bear or wolf go in there and you keep things distracted uh, and you have two of those as a moon druid 
And then if things start getting dire, then I'll go into a polymorph or I'll polymorph someone like like a green own character or something like that. If someone's getting really low and mm -hmm. then I can, you know, switch back and polymorph and, and it, it just buys time. But that's my like yeah. super analytical like war mind <laughs> that, that goes that goes that way. You need those people though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh like i thought like that that combat and even i i was i still feel like a little down that this combat that we recently just did was like not you know there would the i i felt like i fell short i should have added maybe another like average bullet into there but it, it would have became a a dangerous fight when you had to deal mm. with two of those guys jumping in right um and then you could have been flanked and then it, it, I, think I don't it, think it, it got, was a, we got a, lucky a, on the rolls I think that's really what it oh, came absolutely. down to. I think it kind of yeah. went a lot worse, but there were so many natural twenties that, and that stuff happens, right? There's no, I mean, you can't you can't get hung up on on that because it could happen to. I mean, it happens in critical role, happens wherever. Like, there, there's some bosses where he's just like, oh well, fuck, okay, well, <laughs> yeah, you killed it, congratulations, team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I'll go. I'll just go fuck myself now. Yeah, like that, yeah. That, that, that's it. Yeah, I get it. I get yeah. it. Um, even you guys finding the, uh, the ruins in the, uh, in the sandstorm, I wasn't expecting it to, the, the role to, the perception role to go off that, that, that good. I was wondering um, actually. Yeah. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Well, what, what do you want to know? Well, no, cause I was like, it were a, I was like, what was, what's going to happen if we don't. If if Greg hadn't have been like, is there shelter nearby? Because I was kind of like, ah, we can just get through this, but it didn't seem to be going anywhere. So maybe that might be peeking behind the curtain too much. So I'll, no, uh, I can I can talk to it. You know, yeah. um, at at one point, the if you were to continue going, it was going to get to a point where it was going to be dire to be in that storm. Right um especially if you got a nat one that would have been one point of exhaustion already mm -hmm. on you um but it wasn't gonna be like insta death for everybody it was gonna be like if you guys were getting to that point where you continued to go through the storm couldn't find anything weren't really looking mm -hmm. you know there was gonna be that deus ex machina sort of you know moment where the skiff mat where a, a, like a skiff person would have come right yeah. like how at the end of that episode the um like yeah. that person in the leathers the, the person, came up yeah. right right in the in the skiff with the big like ship sort of thing yeah. um so that would have happened but just on the boat and they probably would have picked you up and put you in there and you would have woken up somewhere i got right you. i'm not gonna okay, cool. yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 that's good to know that's funny that's i, I like that though mm -hmm. Um, all right, we'll get back into the recap in a minute. We got a question from Nave that came in. Uh, do you find that people normally play characters close to themselves all the time? Um, I'd love to try and play a character that may not align with my own personality, but I always find I drift back to how I deal with real things or with things. Good so question. I'll, I'll I want to say hi to Ethereal. Yeah. Want to say hi to Ethereal artist first? Hey, Ethereal artist, how are you doing? What's up? Um, the that's a good question. So. I, uh, over time, you know, I think when you play a DM, you, uh, or when you are a DM, you, oh, sorry, this quick tangent. I was mm -hmm. at the grocery store and I was wearing my, my denim jacket and it had, I have a button on it that says dungeon master. And someone said to me, uh, oh, you play DM. And that's why I said <laughs> play DM in my head. Cause it, it was like just fresh. I couldn't believe someone said that. But anyways, um, what I think once you're, once you're, once you're, yeah, what a loser! What a um, no, loser! They, they were they were actually really nice. Um, yeah. uh, they, I think, once you become a DM, you have to get into that mindset where you have to play different characters other than yourself. So that honestly broke me out of my shell of being a okay. Well, I'm gonna be like like Griorn, Greg. No offense, you played Griorn a couple times, have you not? Or or versions of Griorn? Yeah. Um, Bo, I think tied a little bit for you for Bo as well, so right? The, yeah, this is the second incarnation of Bo. Yeah, he's it's, definitely it, he's, it, he's changed, but he's very yeah. The the uh, what's it called? The the idea was there, and I kind of just built on it. Mm -hmm. And and Nave to add to that, 
um, what I do is when I'm playing a character that's totally not like me, I have, a, of course, a little a little sheet um, with a little bit of their flaws or something like that. And I might have like a go to line to set me into that mood of how they would act. And it's pretty much like this is, this is my little trick is just like they're 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 the way they're talking. Right. Um, sort of like if I was making War Chief Dolva as a as a character, I would literally just say the I, I would just literally say the line of um, if you're half the orc, I know you are that boy, your blood that to me tells you how like how honorable mm -hmm. dolva is and how um like his mindset right? right he only it's only black and white for him but anyways i i digress on that i don't know ty if you want to add anything to that yeah i think that uh, a lot of players first characters end up being incarnations of yourself and, and honestly that's how i've heard it explained to a lot of people that are playing their first characters who are like, you know, completely overwhelmed and like, I don't know what to do. Uh, mm -hmm. I always kind of say, or, or like recommend like play the superhero you always kind of wanted to be. Or like, if you were going to be a character in a movie, what would you, you know, who would you want to play or something like that and go with that. So um, I know for me, that's what Barack kind of ended up being, um, which I thought was a cool idea. Like he kind of has a lot of, he has similar ideals and then also very different ones than myself. But at the same time, like he was kind of that cool badass. Like I was already always like a spaghetti Western guy. Like I love Clint Eastwood and all that. And, yeah, and yeah. it, and then I also loved uh, Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. So he was kind of a mishmash of, of all these characters that I loved and, and, and threw together. Um, but I know that as I've moved forward, with D and D, that like there's characters uh, like Seth the Moon Druid um, that uh, that I've played where he's not like me at all. Um, he's kind of he's just a sassy bitch, and that's. But I have like once I get into that mind frame, and usually I find the the accent gets me in there. Like as soon as I start talking as the character, then I'm like, okay, I'm in. This is who I am now. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's whatever you're really comfortable with and and what feels kind of right to you. But I do find that like first characters usually end up being very personal and then after that you can you kind of find the freedom to explore because you're not so much work or worrying about the game mechanics maybe. Um so that you can I was going to I was going to yeah. exactly say that. Yeah. yeah. You're more free to 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 kind of explore character options and all that. You need that safety blanket yeah. of uh, of like knowing like okay I know my character because it's technically just me with a different like different yeah. monster skin or whatever and right. then you and then you know how to play the game but yeah no that's uh, that's a great that's a great point yeah all right back to our recap so we uh, got out of that tent I honestly thought those people were gonna fuck with us man the the uh, your your oh yeah caster and i i honestly like but then again that's just my like my over analyzing like i think everything's a danger mind going off because i was like i don't know man i think these guys are gonna try and like mess with us i thought we could end up in the fey realm i thought there was so many things that could have <laughs> could have took place there and then <laughs> they just like left us alone and fed us and you know the one guy was a little bit of a, a little bitch for but I, I think that was a great character i loved him uh and how petty he was it was it was great to play off of um just off the top of my head that like slaster was was just made that that when you rolled when i think it was when amanda rolled the d the d10 and it came up on my random table of run into three oh, uh crazy traveling bards and i was yeah. like oh shit i didn't come up with it and so i just kind of rolled into it and um yeah, I, I actually really like Slaster. It's Slaster, Caster, and and Cal, and they're yeah. very differing, different uh, personalities, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I did, I did like them though. I did really like them. I think that's. Uh, uh, I, I was gonna say, like, I feel like they're characters that we're gonna expect to see later on. So you might want to freshen up on those guys. Oh, I've 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 yeah. wrote down 
character profiles for them now too. Oh, yeah. Um but a lot I like sometimes like the the randomness of just coming up with a few characters if you have a few names and you can kind of just just kind of jump off there and like you're yeah. not really like chained to what you've already written. Um but I can totally get you. Uh I know like I don't think I think it was also I think Cypher was a little curious about who those people were and what their deal was. So it's not it wasn't just you and it that wasn't I mean if I wasn't so sick I would have had much more interaction with those characters. But uh Oh I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I oh, I felt I felt so bad for you, man. That's why I kinda of just was like, All right, we're gonna role play it into the story that uh Bo's sick, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But in um, case you can't tell. <laughs> yeah, in case you can't tell, Bo is not Bat- feeling good after that. Batman fight. is now sick. Yeah. Um But I think you're right to have like a ca- a cautious approach mm-hmm. to to anything, especially in D&D, especially when you know like there's always that that meme that the DM's always out to get you and always out to like pull one over on you. But I uh I don't I mean, sometimes it's fun to do that, but some other times I want you all to have like a good experience. And um, maybe thinking back, well, that episode was right after the big combat episode, so that was good. Um, I was just hoping that we had another bigger combat this session, but that went by real quick. Um, but hey, what are you gonna do? That's showbiz. <laughs> that's showbiz, baby. Give them the old razzle dazzle. Yeah, that's it. The razzle dazzle. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I mean that's really impressive that they were just off the top of your head. I love that. Um, oh, thank you. And kind of ended up, yeah, they ended up being really cool characters. And I do like the fact that because now you can kind of like that also lulls us into a bit of a false sense of security, knowing that you'll give us just NPCs to interact and talk with, and that aren't out there to kill us. So that when you do give us the ones that are out to kill us, that that's gonna be a, it's gonna be, it'll, it'll be, you know, we could be fooled a little bit more. And like the whole silver terror, like Greg just brought it up. He thought he thought it was well placed, and like it was an obvious side quest. Um, don't think it needed to be long winded. Yeah, like once again, you you all rolled that though. You ran into the silver yeah. terror by chance. It, oh, okay. There, there wasn't ever going to be. Like I, I put it in there. I didn't expect you all to. There's a few other things that you you've could have could have run into, mm-hmm. and the silver terror could have just kept on kept keeping on, right? Um, Would have lived another day. But yeah, like I'll be honest. I think like uh, I do want to shy away from less travel uh, sessions now and moving into something right. else, right? Um, and we'll see. We'll see where the next few sessions go. I'm really, I'm really excited after our Christmas break to kind of jump in and uh, jump in and, and you know add in a few extra things. I have some things that have I'm really can't wait to show you all. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it, man. Mm-hmm. And all I know right. you need the gold. I fucking need the gold. <laughs> that's not a that's not a joke anymore. As Greg says in the chat here, by the time we found him, he could have been a gold terror. Cause that's true that's bad, true bad jokes i don't know if i that would have i would have been able to redeem that for anything of monetary value though <laughs> i don't know like i mean uh bullet armor bullet armor plating is pretty, it's pretty yeah. uh it's pretty uh you, know, get, you can get a pretty penny from it or you can make something from it right um but that costs a pretty penny too keep that in mind sometimes oh. it might be easier just to sell it i'm aware uh, oh, all yes, right. you are aware. <laughs> Another question from uh, from the Discord. What plane besides the material would you love to have as the home plane for a campaign and why? This is coming to us from Je ne sais quoi. I'm just going to say Je ne sais. It. Je ne sais quoi. quoi. Yeah, but it's I Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. But, well, je ne sais quoi um, from my time in the French provinces. Yeah, and that's where you us uh, can add the end would yes. deal with, you know. God is that one. Um, I, I'm trying to think about that. Like, um, that's a very good question. 
I'll answer first while you're thinking. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Because I don't think, I don't know if it's a, like, maybe the Astral Sea. Because I kind of want, like, a space, kind of want a space campaign. I don't know if that counts Well, like, the Gith, not. the Gith are, like, space pirates. I don't know if you've noticed that. The who? Gith. Gith. The Gith Yankee. Uh, they are, like, goblin space pirates. So the Astral right. Plane yeah. is, and the Astral Sea is a part of there, right? Oh, I guess um, so, yeah. I think oh, the, the, this is tough. The ethereal plane is kind of kind of the same thing too. Like I'm looking it up right now. Um, the ethereal plane is often linked to an ocean, but rather than water, uh, it's a sea of boundless pos uh, possibility, right? Um, the astral plane or the astral sea is kind of like that, but the ethereal plane could be cool for like a pirate campaign just based on the ethereal plane. Right. Um, and unlike the astral plane in which solid objects can exist, anything or, and everything that goes to the ethereal plane becomes ethereal. So you'd have to really be interested in uh, making like kind of like a incor incorporeal, like a ghost. It's literally a like ghost, like Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. uh, when they go to the other side or whatever. I think that would be a really interesting uh, campaign setting. Yeah, that would be kind of that could be interesting. It could be kind of cool. It would be, I feel like it would be, the mechanics of that would be really fucky. Like, you'd really have to kind of press that out. As a DM, that would be very, it would be kind of interesting to, to run. Well, it might be difficult, right? If you could do that, you can go the easy way, right? Anything that's in the ethereal plane is ethereal and it hits and hits, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I wouldn't be able to bring in a lot of, I'd have to homebrew a lot of monsters, a lot of uh, things to to bring into the world right um like i think that i don't know if there's an ethereal dragon but you'd have to make that you know you know what i mean there's be a lot more work involved in it that's why like the material plane is like really easy to deal like mm -hmm. the fey wild is the fey wild a plane it's more of a copy of the material plane mm -hmm. um, what if you didn't create any monsters and it was just scenes from ghost it's all patrick swayze it's just all uh, yeah yeah just, and and demi moore yeah I don't know. Was it Demi Moore? I don't know. But like, you'll have like part of it in the real plane and part of it in the ethereal plane, and it's just scenes from Ghost. That it's the whole, would be it's the whole wild. That'd be wild. So like, do it like a um, a West Marches campaign. Yeah. Okay. In this homebrewed world, the material plane players are doing there, and whatever they affect in the material plane to the ethereal plane yeah. affects the players there and vice versa. That would be wild. Look what we just and then obviously the, the BBEG would be Swayze. Yes. Yeah, you'd have to be. You'd have to be. <laughs> and and you'd have to make clay pottery with him. His weapons would be clay pots, like exploding clay pots or something. Yeah, that's it. Just throwing them. Yeah. Just just <laughs> chucking them. Just link style. You know what's really sad? It's like I'm so pale that it barely registers. It doesn't if, register that you have an arm. There you go. Yeah. Oh, I'm ethereal now. I'm yeah, a ghost. You're, you're I'm an ethereal artist. <laughs> Shout out to ethereal artist. <laughs> uh, but thank you for the question, Janassi Quill. Yeah, we got one more here. Just read out one off another. Uh, is Bo going to take up a second job for extra gold? I'm really thinking about selling Wawa Tessie as a horse, and then she can just, and doing that daily, and we can just sell horses during the daytime. I've, I saw a TikTok of that. Because now that I'm in the TikTok sphere, I, I saw it and someone's like, it's literally a, a, a deal between the bard and the druid. Like, yeah, hey, I'll sell just, you this horse. And, and they just take off just, the next day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, you got um, this horse? And then, yeah. <laughs> hey, like, why don't you sell some of your little trinkets? Your little wood I mean, carvings. I could, I could like start going to markets and sell because they're because man, I need big, I need large amounts of money. We're gonna have to like run a heist, or I'm gonna have to start selling horses. But like the little figurines, I can't, I can like maybe a silver. Oh, let's be serious here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's take it, it too it, small. It's too small. It's too small. Admittedly, I have been stingy. I have been stingy. Yeah. And you're, you can, a you're a frugal guy. I'm a frugal guy because like. I I I will fully admit that I have made uh I've made I made mistakes because I, a lot of our air, uh, sessions you know were taken out in the planes, um, no nave, no one leveled up yet, um, 
<laughs> the finding the items and you know selling giving you any opportunities there wasn't a lot of opportunities there um the only time that you really had an opportunity if i mean there was armazol where some of you went in and bought a few things uh for traps and then there was tolerand right so we just yeah we didn't um, have anything to sell hey i don't think we had anything to sell we also didn't have any thing any money to buy things so it was uh i mean how much money do you have now you you all got like um no we have like 20 gold no you got a platinum the platinum's 10 gold oh that's right whoopsie daisy maybe that's where all the, maybe that's where all this confusion has come from you keep thinking it's 100 and it's like no no no, we're still broke. yeah i think i might have but um no they're i've retroact i've not retroactively but i've actively changed that uh in the coming sessions mm -hmm. i will that's the that's the teaser i will give uh, to give you all like I, i'm <laughs> working towards that because i feel like shit don't worry you like might shit. get some more money uh yeah might all right moving on with our recap so how how strongly did you think you were gonna fuck with us on that uh, path thing on the path uh, uh there were some pretty nasty things on that on the bosrum path yeah um so I mean, the, the Bosrum path itself, uh, and historically in the world, it was like a merchant, it was like the Silk Road, right? It's okay. very much like a, a long stretch of mer merchant uh, travel, travel ways. But ever since like the Dragon Trading Post was open and then the teleportation circle was created uh, there, the path south of that, where you guys started going in from the Dragon tr Trading Post down, has fallen into total disrepair because, like, no, why, there's no point in going that way unless you have, unless you don't have like a, a writ of transport for uh, getting there. So, there were a few nasty things. I mean, there was some little annoying things like um, shock lizards uh, that could have shown up. Uh, there could have been some scarabs. Um, I'm trying to theme it well with like the desert because you're right. you're going from plains territory into desert a little bit more, and now you're in the full blown desert, going be getting caught in that sandstorm, right? right, right. Um, so I was looking at like stuff like that. Uh, then like there were some bandits, but I always hate using bandits. I'll be honest, that's a last ditch response for me. If you've uh, yeah. if I can't come up with something is like. I'll have a group of bandits show up, but I don't know. I don't. I don't like using bandits a lot. I mean, sometimes it's fun to have like a uh, a talking enemy, like someone you could maybe like make a deal with, or you could talk to, or yeah. That's my yeah. that's my position on bandits, but uh, but yeah, it's definitely a trope. Like it's something that you see more often than not in, in a D and D campaign. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. I um. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I haven't really had a lot of uh, people to talk to. But then, then again, even though we're in an initiative order, we could have talked a situation out as well, especially with, um, well, I mean, not really with the Yuan T because they had your, they had your 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 raiding party at the time, and then you had the uh, Wrong. robed, the purple robed man yep. uh, in yeah, Talrand. He wasn't going to talk to us. Uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> good point good point yeah um but it's uh yeah it was interesting it's interesting and I, I i do have to add in a little bit more talking characters and like this right now this is probably the well no it's not the longest campaign i've run but it's getting close to the longest campaign mm -hmm. i've run because either you know real life happens and stuff falls apart or you know you just do a quick wham bam thank you ma'am in that one and then you move along right so i'm learning things i'm learning things as i go yeah, along man. right this, this um, will, i'm not here to to be like a let's put the dm on trial thing we're, oh we're no, just, no 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 we're just no, talking about recaps not. buddy <laughs> that's it that's all you need to do that's all we're doing that's um all we're doing. i appreciate it though i i think just like learning through learning through key, like trial trial and error right <laughs> i've i've learned things now that i i, I rewatch every episode and I go back and I check in on everything there. Um, but yeah, awesome, learn, learn as I go along. There you go. All right. Another question come in from Mr. Johnny Pie on the, uh, on the discord. What do you, 
look for in an ideal RPG tabletop setup? Or in other words, what does your perfect gaming table look like? Okay. Okay. So I've become a huge fan of digital as of late, which is terrible. You know, I used to do maps and I used to use minis, but that's costly and time consuming to do. Mm -hmm. So my idea for the ultimate table now is enough to seat comfortably um, six, seven, seven, including the DM, mm -hmm. right? Or I mean, if you want to be on it, you could have you could have. I would do uh, nine. Eight. Like I would have a table for yeah. nine. You'd have a table for nine. Okay, I'd have a table for eight. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, six, uh, three on either side, and two on the others, um, and then that would be the full table for me. Um, inset with a TV, so and like I would have all the wirings and connections yeah. in there. I would also add in speakers. Uh, below the table, uh, pointing down from the table, not up. Uh, it'll create. It'll actually create its own base in that in that in that uh, that setting. Um, so you can have the ambient table in there. Uh, I did see something that was really interesting to me, where it was um, the table dipped down, and then you can put all your books and stuff in there. But they also had a light set up underneath uh, in a little lip so you could still look underneath the the table and have your your papers there and you can kind of look and flip through them and not have to like use your cell phone like to look at that that's oh and drink holders obviously i was gonna even go a step further and say like a full dice tray that's like in a slide like that you can just so it'll it comes up It'll be a flat table if you need it to be a flat table, but then you can like slide it across or you can like push it and slide it. And there's your dice tray. That'd, that'd oh, you mean like inset in the table, inset like almost like a removal? Table. Oh, yeah. oh, I like that. I like that. I was thinking like you could take a drawer, you could have a drawer, drawers, right? Yeah. Um, that could hold all your stuff, but also that's your, you, you can actually fully remove it and that's your uh, dice tray. But that's an even better idea, right? You, you could make cut that out. into a dice tower. Like you could pull out the drawer. Boom, set it like on its top, dice tower. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think for me, and I I'm, I know with you and, and Greg, uh, music is a big thing while you're playing D&D. &D, so I need to have those speakers in there, and I want to have all the yeah. wires connecting uh, the, the aux, um, especially if you're doing a show too, right? Um, if you're doing a show and using this table as the show, I want to have a little switchboard where I can switch to different cameras. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good call. You know, so if you have a, a camera, mm -hmm. a tabletop camera here, and it, so it looks down at the map, mm -hmm. that would be cool. And then you can still get people to have their own little minis, right? Because yeah. they could bring those minis in it's and they could paint fun. them and make them. Yeah, but then yeah. I can make the maps, and the maps right. are a lot easier for me to deal with. And then, um, yeah. The, that I think that would be easier because like think about sitting at a table at like at like a you know normal table height and then trying to look across the table to look at a screen that's also laying at that thing it would there'd be so much glare on it I feel like you also need like if I'm going if I'm if it's my setup like I want straight kind of like medieval style like high back chairs like comfortable ones mm -hmm. uh, I, I want mm -hmm. a fog machine probably a suit of armor somewhere in the room um you know I, you gotta you, like really just create the atmosphere i think would be a oh yeah like yeah. i would i really want to like not this room i would love to move everything into obviously this is the your christmas <laughs> in the room. fireplace room right now there's the other room that like it's kind of like where our, like our little like workout machines and stuff is like i would love to move everything into there and slowly make it like a like a recording room slash games right. room but hey this is the, this is this is what it is um i, I love it still it's good um but yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> um i don't know lately i've been like really wanting a 3d printer so i could like so you're like making the minis? Just, yeah so i could do the minis but like at what point where am i gonna what am i gonna use them for right now we're all okay. digital um i just still like my, my brother used to play a lot of warhammer and yeah. that's where the the love or the interest for minis goes in. Um, 
even though my brother's like younger than me, he would always go to the store and he'd be like, Hey, look, I'm painting all these goblins. Do you want to like paint a few with me? I'm like, yeah, for sure. Like, let's do this. And, uh, I fell in love with it, but it's too expansive. Well, see, that's good because I have zero interest in ever doing something like that. So if I have minis, I'll just send them to you. You can paint them. <laughs> I, if I had to paint, I'm not artistic in one. Like, sorry, I'm not physically artistic. Uh, wait, artistic. Yeah, I, you know what I mean. Visually artistic. It all it all went to one side. It went to the music side for me, and but that's that's better none, than nothing. Not else. Yeah. Um. All right, buddy. One last question before we skedaddle out of here. This one comes from our good friend Ethan in the Discord. If you had to choose between fighting 1,000 rat-sized ants. Or fighting one million ant-sized rats, which one would you choose? Oh, sorry. The first one you're accompanied by Ethalus Pastorus. The second one you're not. So one once again, one thousand ant or rat-sized ants, or a million ant-sized rats. Hmm. I don't think there's a good a answer. Million ant-sized. There's. It's a lose-lose on either side, really, right? Rat-sized ants with the pincers could definitely do some massive damage. You they know? can lift how much, like, times whatever their body weight. Were f- you're fucked. They could do a lot of damage. Yeah, I, I, they would be able to lift me, 100%. Because if they can lift... Like, I've seen nature shows where they're all, like, banding together to lift up a stick. And they could probably cut your leg off with their pincers. Yeah, really- so I'm going to go with 100 rat-sized ants ants because their teeth are smaller you mean ant-sized um, rats a million ant-sized rats yeah, a million ant-sized rats because that's tiny i think that's yeah that's I, like think, a, I think that's the choice i think that's the choice yeah because i mean science behind it they would get like um 100 rant uh ants the rat sized ants mm-hmm. would pick me up and move me and chop my leg off and, and stuff like that 100 yeah. percent. yeah i think 100%. that's the answer unfortunately regardless of uh, yeah regardless yeah. of ethalus being there i need to have i need to have uh well you can stop the combat rats. superiority you can stop yeah. rats that are this size that's, yeah I'm, no problem uh, oh, oh. <laughs> that'd be, <it'd> be <laughs> messy if he's so gross very messy what about one million uncles i oh, oh God. i get it ha 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 oh ha 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 fucking greg thanks <laughs> thanks greg thanks greg all right guys really? well that is our stream for tonight uh thank you peter for joining me man i really appreciate it uh thank we will see you me. in a couple weeks we will see everyone else in a couple weeks on the wednesday following actually we will not be next it won't it'll be in the new year because we're not doing a actual session in two weeks so there's nothing to recap so i will see you back here in january and uh, i hope you all have a wonderful holidays christmas anything you celebrate and a wonderful new year thanks again peter and we'll talk to y'all later thank you ty and just a reminder that greg you didn't level up